Harrington, and today I'll be presenting on eliciting tech futures among black young adults. This work was done in collaboration with Dr. Tawana Dillahunt at the University of Michigan. This project focused on eliciting technology futures through a series of remote speculative co-design workshops. This is a part of a larger effort to explore how co-design might support the learning of design and digital skills for tech readiness among Black and Latinx communities, which oftentimes due to lack of access and exposure fall behind in these areas. One of the major challenges with regards to equity and inclusion in the tech space is the concept of the digital divide. This divide illustrates that oftentimes communities of ethnic minorities or communities that are lower income tend to fall behind when it comes to technology proficiency and digital literacy. This leads to lower representation in tech jobs and HCI research, which ultimately creates technology that is exclusive or even harmful to certain groups. When potential harm to black and brown communities is an afterthought, HCI research is tasked to study how to alleviate harm or expand inclusion after system deployment. Positioning communities of color to primarily be considered when needing to shift problematic technology engagement as opposed to being considered architects of initial innovation. Black designers and scholars have begun to explore envisioning technology futures alongside communities of color, directly situating these communities in the engagement of design at the forefront of concept exploration instead of after an innovation exists and has proven harmful. We're seeing now with projects like 51 Futures and the PAC project by Stephanie Dinkins, what it means to engage the black community in technological design. So in order to consider technology futures that are architected directly from black and brown communities, we pose this question of how we engage black and brown communities in the design process to speculate futures of technology or even community. Uh, so through a series of speculative co-design workshops, we explored how we might construct more inclusive design fictions that speculated the future of technology considering black and brown current realities. Looking at the literature on speculative design across HCI, we find that it is discussed as an inclusive method to engage populations in the consideration of technology futures, yet identities such as class, race, or education are oftentimes not considered. We look to Afrofuturism as a framework for this project to motivate inclusive and impactful design fictions and scenarios. Compared to traditional speculative design approaches, Afrofuturism provides a more empathetic design engagement, yet is relatively absent in the ways that we consider the future of technology in HCI. So we worked with a local arts engine on the south side of Chicago, Illinois, in the United States um, through its design apprenticeship program to design these workshops and identify youth that might be interested in learning more about design. Six Black and Hispanic youth that were already enrolled in the design apprenticeship program participated in remote co-design workshops during the summer of 2020. Having these workshops held over Zoom actually allowed us to examine remote and virtual approaches to co-design as a way to expand access to design. So at the onset of our co-design workshop series, we used episodes of the TV show Black Mirror to elicit conversation about speculative design and utopian futures. Um, we also developed a design workbook with staff of the design apprenticeship program to introduce students to design concepts and terms, illustrate examples of various speculative design activities and provide space for concept generation. Youth were asked to think about a utopian future for themselves and for Chicago. And so using the guidebook, we walked students through ideation, storyboarding, and design fictions. From the early part of our workshops, looking at some of our key findings, um, youth identified that some of the elements that contributed to dystopian realities in the context of their personal lives and environment were things like unfair housing practices, non-livable wages, racism, and bigotry. Um, when identifying what a utopia would look like for them, much of it centered on fairer treatment in society. We found that even in being prompted to envision the future with no bounds, DAP students could not detach constructs of racism or poverty from future realities. 
Additionally, we also found that in using Afrofuturism as a framework, students designed fictions and storyboards focused on addressing how black and brown communities could create their own solutions to societal conditions. Youth were able to build onto each other's fictions and center themselves as the technologists, scientists, and governmental leaders. Students commented on how Afrofuturism allowed them to see themselves in the design of futures. So this work allowed us to consider several implications for speculative co-design. Um, number one, there is merit in Afrofuturism as a lens for speculating future technology. Um, number two, there are benefits to having various design fiction probes. And number three, the value of the design workbook itself as more of an expansive uh, design probe to allow for flexibility and engaging in co-design. So we would like to thank you um, and offer up time for any questions that people might have about this work.